Hello, I'm Lux. And I'm Ember. And going to Twilight School would be pretty fun. This is our thoughts on My Little Pony, French Biz Magic. Season 8, Episode 12, Marks for Effort. Okay, that ending of that episode was worth the middle section. It was cringy, but it's not that really harsh cringe. It's just like, ooh. And then also the fact that me and Ember were like, she's up to something. But we don't know what. <laughs> Speaking of Cozy Glow. Yes, because at first I was like, oh, Twilight sent her to prove to the Cutie Mark Crusaders that they already know what's going on and that they don't need to go to the school. That was my first guess. My second guess was that she was just a horribly bratty person and she was messing with the Cutie Mark Crusaders. My second guess was very similar to that, especially after the second set of lessons, because just something about the way she was acting, I'm like, Hmm. This doesn't quite feel right. And just something about her voice actor reminded me of Princess from Powerpuff Girls. Hmm. Also Darla from Cats Don't Dance. Ah, when she's acting sweet. Uh-huh. Uh, Key word being acting. That's a good movie. I like that movie. It doesn't get enough attention. No, no, it's tragically underrated. And I didn't realize Scott Bakula voiced the main cat. Who knew he could sing? Well, we'd have to double check the credits because sometimes the speaking voice isn't the same as the singing voice. By the way, go Scott Bakula. Yeah. And now let's Bakula it up to this episode. <laughs> I would give you a high five, but that would hurt the microphones. The first part of the episode was okay. Then we got into this middle part where the Cutie Mark Crusaders were trying to fail at friendship to get into the school. And almost everything they did was just just cringy enough that you're like especially that play that they were putting on until they suddenly congratulated each other on how good of a job they did on the play because they're all speaking in undertones which theoretically the audience can't hear but then oh they go straight into a hug and all your effort was for nothing yeah i do like the fake acting though they did a pretty good job of that fake acting the actors who were acting because remember when you go to act don't act like you're acting when you're playing a character that you're already acting as, you can't just act. You have to act as the character would act. It gets very confusing sometimes. Would my character like a peanut butter and jelly sandwich or a peanut butter and banana and jelly sandwich? Hmm. The questions actors ask themselves. What is my motivation for this scene? You're eating a sandwich. Yes, but what is the real meaning of that sandwich? You're just eating a sandwich. It means you're hungry. It means that in this scene, you're going to get interrupted while eating a sandwich. <laughs> That's it. There's no deeper meaning to this. I'm not doing a phil philosophical movie. It's just you eating a sandwich and then someone's going to interrupt you. Like life. Okay, whatever gets you to eat the sandwich. Rolling! Like I said, it's not the bad kind of real cringy, but it wasn't really the funny kind of cringy they were going for. It was just that cringy was like, here we go again. <laughs> but that ending... I really liked the way they wrapped things up. It was, it felt good. It really did. And based on how the season's going, I think this is a type of episode that they needed because Twilight School of Friendship would be fun. Hanging out with your friends, learning about friendship, but a traditional education is still valuable. One school is not a substitution for the other and they needed to show that that traditional lessons still have value and are still important. I think it was also illustrating the difference between Twilight's, not a technical school, um, trade school? Trade school would be a good word for it because friendship is a very important thing, but it's more like a college because you're not looking at the more narrow meat of education. You're reading, writing, arithmetic, and sciences. You know, your relatively standard modern education. Yeah, you're supposed to have those basics before you go to college. And in the college, you build on whatever particular thing you want to do. Like if you want to be an actor or if you want to be a biologist or... An engineer or a psychologist, you have those base skills and then you go into all of these electives. You pick your class. Yes. Like rogue, thief, <laughs> <laughs> lawful good, chaotic evil. Oh wait, that's your 
nature. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, no, stick with class. <laughs> or classes, because you usually aren't taking just one at college. Unless it's a very brutal class. Then you may just be doing one course over the summer period to get it out of the way. Mm. But yeah, like you said, I think it was to illustrate the difference between your pre-college classes, like high school and stuff like that. And then the difference between that and college. Because college can look really fun from the outside. But it's still a lot of work. Ask anyone who's ever taken astronomy. It's like 95% math, which is not what most people think going into it. Most classes in college aren't bird courses. Even art classes, which look really easy to everyone else. Like, oh, you just paint stuff all day. And you look at naked people. How is that not fun? Have you ever tried to draw a naked person and get it right so your teachers don't have you draw it again? Trust me, I took figure drawing. Also, some of the people that we have model for us. Not the prettiest people out there. Though I never saw a naked person, I just saw shades, shadows, and lights. Because your artistic mind broke the object that you were trying to draw down into figures that you could go, okay, I can take this shape and put this shape on paper. Which I always got teased by some of my friends like, oh, I see you're drawing a naked person. Isn't it great to look at naked people? I'm like, it's like being a gynecologist. <laughs> it's just a job. Yeah. And if it's something else, you are going to get slapped. Probably with a lawsuit. Paper hurts. Very much so. Especially when the law is wrapped up in it. But moving on, so what was the cringiest parts for you? Or any particular nitpicks you really want to dive into? Okay, well, let's just start with the beginning of them trying to peek into the school. I'm sure there are some ground floor windows somewhere. Also, why not go on one of the tours? Good point. Also, I know Scootaloo can't really fly, but Sweetie Belle still has unicorn magic. You guys couldn't have picked one pony to levitate those extra few inches. I understand doing a little bit of stacking to minimize how far you have to lift, but should be able to manage small levitation at this point because we've seen her manage small levitations at this point. Speaking of that also reminded me of one of the scenes a little later in the episode where they were trying to use a disguise to be in the class. And I found that funny right off the bat. I was like, Classic glasses. You know, the ones with the big nose and the mustache. Classic. Though I'm like, question, that's a human nose. You have to ask where that design comes from in the MLP universe. Though, didn't Pinkie Pie wear one back in season one in Dragon Shy? I didn't question it back then, probably because it was Pinkie Pie. True, but this was Scootaloo. In this scene... I knew the moment I saw was Scootaloo and the fact that Rainbow Dash was telling a story, I'm like, Scootaloo can't hold herself back. She's going to reveal herself because she's going to finish Rainbow Dash's story. I just knew it. And you could see it progressing because she started inching forward. She was in the back of the class. And then by the near the end of the story, she was at the front going, Ooh. And then Rainbow Dash goes, and what do you think we did? You did. Da -da 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 -da. I didn't tell that story to any of my students. Scootaloo. Never heard of her. <laughs> Did you see a bunny about this big? You mean with long ears like this? Yeah. Big eyes like this? Yeah. Buck teeth like this? Yeah. Never seen it. Also, another sign that Twilight School of Friendship is more college-like. A school wouldn't assign you three random people that you don't know and tell you to go do something nice for them. But a college social studies class could do that. Hmm. Yeah, that was like another thing that kind of like threw me for a second there. I'm like, this makes me even more suspicious of this, of her. I was like, really? That's your homework to do something nice for Bon Bon, Mrs. Cake, and Apple Bloom's big brother. Interesting. Though I did enjoy that Mrs. Cake took and mixed all the sprinkles and made a rainbow sprinkle cake. I pretty much knew that was going to happen. Because the moment they were like, yeah, we just separated these all for Mrs. K. That's why she doesn't have to use rainbow sprinkles anymore. But what if she liked using rainbow sprinkles? Though it does give her more options for the future. It does. Like if someone specifically asks, I want a cake with blue sprinkles. She can now do a cake with blue sprinkles instead of like having to ask Pinkie Pie, who would probably magically somehow suddenly have blue sprinkles out of the rainbow sprinkler or just has her own supply of blue sprinkles because she's pinkie pie though i have a feeling that if you started to eat that cake you'll be like this isn't a sprinkle it's confetti 
It's still blue, though. <laughs> or maybe Pound or Pumpkin could have done something. We haven't seen them in a while. I have a feeling they're still small little babies, though. But we've seen that they have rather powerful abilities. Hmm. It's going to be interesting if they ever aged them. The show goes on long enough, they might have time. I know we're eight seasons in, but we were a couple seasons in before they got introduced. No, I don't remember what season, but I can tell you the episode was called Baby Cakes. Thank you. <laughs> uh, I almost want to say season three or two. Comment below. Thank you. Also remember to thumbs up this video and subscribe. Mid-show plug. Though I have no idea where this is actually going to end up in the edits. Probably sooner than mid. So other than the end of the episode, what was your favorite part of the episode? Oh, the end and not in the, oh, thanks, Celestia, the episode's over. But no, this is a really nice ending. Yeah. I was like, the setup. Oh, that's so cool. Because I knew they weren't in trouble, but because they set it up like they were being judged in front of some type of... Um, council. Inquisition council, yeah. The way that all of the other instructors walked in, the timing on the music and the way Twilight's chair swung around. And I love their... Ah! <laughs> we didn't do anything! We know that now. Also rather mean of Twilight to automatically assume that the Cutie Mark Crusaders would do something that mean. That struck me really odd at that point. I'm like, what did Cozy Glow do? And that was another, you know, stab in the coffin at that point. was like, she's not a very nice person. I know, because that's when I was like, okay, confirm that she's a little witch. Because I was almost waiting when all of the other students came out. I was waiting for Cozy Glow not to be there and to find out that she wasn't even a student. That's what I was thinking as well near that end part. And didn't see her. And all the other students that were used to seeing had already exited. And if she's doing any good at all in her lesson, she should be starting to make friends with the other students, not just the Cutie Mark Crusaders. I wonder if that was all part of the writing to make you think she was not a nice person. May have been, because I, I went a lot of different directions before we got to the ending. Because she was honest in saying that the Crusaders had been tutoring her, but dishonest in implying what that tutoring entailed. And tutor is a rather trusted position, so that was supremely mean, even though dumb for the right reasons. As uh, Starlight said, very devious. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, listening, listening. That was another really good part of this episode. I'm going to go and dust my room for the 87th time. Okay, they're all rearranged. Now I can rearrange them again in reverse alphabetical order. Comfort cushion, security blanket, comforting cocoa. <sighs> Oh god, her expressions in this episode were great. Tell me. <laughs> that was great. And also showing that, yes, a school of friendship still does need a guidance counselor. Well, you would think a school of friendship would definitely need a guidance counselor. Even if everyone's getting along, there are going to be times where someone won't get along with someone else. And in a school of friendship, it's important to have someone who can be a mediator between something like that. So that position is Possibly even more important in a school where the focus is friendship. But jumping back just a little bit, you know, it seemed very unbalanced for Twilight to just accuse the Crusaders like that. Because that was a huge leap. So I'm guessing that she should have talked to Starlight and gotten a little guidance before approaching the Crusaders. Also asking for their side of the story. That's something she didn't do. Instead of, she should have just said, instead of getting all angry and huffy, she should have asked them in and, uh, and go, Cozy Glow informed me that you were her tutors, and her test came out rather odd. What did you tutor her in? Can you tell me a little bit about what you covered in your tutoring? Instead of, I can't believe you three would be so horrible and such horrible creatures to make this poor pony fail just so you can get into the school. That's an odd logic leap. It's actually a fairly reasonable logic leap, but it's making assumptions without gathering evidence and talking to all parties involved. Because they were trying to manufacture friendship problems and show that they still were so bad at friendship that they needed to be admitted to the school. So based on their previous pranks... But it seems still a big logic leap, especially for the princess of friendship, to assume that kids that have shown such good aptitude in it 
would suddenly, even if they're trying to desperately get into the school, would be that mean. Agreed. I'm just saying that there's room there to make the assumptions. She was wrong to go based on assumptions without getting all the information. Though it does remind me of the interesting logic leaps that Twilight did in the movie. That got her into some big trouble. Uh, so what were your final thoughts? I think this encompassed some very important lessons. And not just in the, oh yes, friendship, you should follow all the pillars of friendship. But also to the home audience. You can't use our friendship school as an excuse to skip your classes. They're important. Basically, college may be fun, but finish your general school first. It will give you a lot more than just going on to college. Unless you're one of those people who like find general school really boring, not because the classes are boring, but because you somehow already know everything because there are people like that who are just that smart. They are bored in school because they actually already know all the answers. And skipping them up a few grades helps with the intellectual challenge but not so much with the social skills that are learned over a period of years but we're talking the average person not the exceptions myself i just really liked that ending it was so wonderful and the tension and the ah and spike still getting used to his wings that was a nice touch because it's a new thing it's kind of like with twilight getting used to her wings in season four and this has been our thoughts on My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic, Season 8, Episode 12. Marks for Effort. You guys made it to the outro again? You're, you guys are hardcore, seriously. So, not a lot of variants here, because we make a lot of videos, we've been at this a while, there's other videos, in case you haven't seen them. The whole playlist for MLP, Sailor Moon Crystal, Ruby... We do some Disney stuff, we did some video game stuff. I think Ember's Reading Room is over a year old now, so there's a lot of content there. Also broken down into a couple playlists for your listening pleasure. In Joy Lux's art, you can find more of it scattered throughout the internet in still image form. Check the links. If you want to support the channel financially, we have both a Patreon and a coffee. Patreon starts at $1.00. That gets you a monthly sketch and the ability to vote on the contents of that sketch. Coffee is a one-time deal which works in increments of three. Thank you so much for watching and listening. We appreciate all of the support that we receive in the form of views, likes, comments, dialogues, suggestions, and of course financially as well. But all of it is truly appreciated. Thank you to all of our supporters, subscribers, etc. in whatever form you choose to grace us with your presence.